Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Guiga Adedeji. I'm so glad to welcome you to this week's edition of Leader View. I hope your week has been great. We bless God for that. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this broadcast. We thank you for everyone listening. We thank you for the leadership of everyone. We thank you for the experiences of everyone. We thank you because nothing happens to any one of us outside your understanding and your plan. We ask that you help us to become uh, better people, better leaders under your name, fulfilling your purpose on the head in the name of Jesus. Bless this broadcast and let it max be maximized in the lives of everyone listening. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My name is Boega Adedeji. I'm so glad to welcome you to this week's edition of Leader View. I believe very strongly that the Lord was uh, very strong in our behalf last week. He shared with us some insightful thoughts on leadership. Uh, we looked at leadership destiny. Today we want to consider a few other things. Uh, I've taken, uh, I've seen the three quick steps we needed to take towards securing our leadership destiny last week. Today the Lord has prepared something else for us in the book of Genesis. I'm sure you remember that we are on the series that is tagged the leadership trip to Genesis. And I'm sure you've been blessed. Today the Lord will bless you again. And I want you to be very attentive. We're going to be considering something that is very important from the book of Genesis chapter 18, which I have titled The Leadership Promise. The Leadership Promise. The Leadership Promise. All right. So let's delve straight into it and let us get blessed together. John C. Maxwell, in his words, said, Everything rises and falls on leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. He later went on to say, Leadership rises and falls on communication. But we will focus today on what he said about everything rises and falls on leadership. It is obvious from that statement that why many people could experience certain things, usually what produces their experiences are not always what they do or what they don't do. You know, why you could become a victim of your own circumstance, of your own mistakes, your own decisions. It has also been discovered that what could become of you could also be a product of who is making choices, who is making decisions for you. So why we know that it is possible that a people have an experience, have uh, something befalling them, whether good or bad. It could be a product of the decisions of those who have influence over them. So why it has been said that everything rises and falls on leadership, it obviously explains the reality that the growth of an organization, the, the, the progress of a people may not necessarily be a product of their own decisions, but the product of the decisions of those who represent them, those who lead them, those who influence them. So your influencers actually could become the greatest determinant of your destiny. What becomes of your life could be a product of those who make decisions for you, those who rule your life, those who make choices for you. Now, we know that in a nation, for instance, a nation perhaps of millions of people, the tendency for the millions to be led by very few people is very strong. So we elect certain people to represent us in positions of authority, and these people make choices on our behalf, they make decisions on our behalf that influences our lives, that affect our lives beyond perhaps what we could love to accept. So it's important that we know that when things are going wrong, Usually, the first point of call, the first point of consideration is to check what is the influence on these people? What is the influence on this organization? We ask the leadership question, who is leading this organization? Because if we can examine the leader, we can examine why the situation of the people has remained how it has been. If we can explain the decisions of the leaders, we can explain the circumstance that the people have and we can predict their outcome, we can predict their escape at the same time. So today we want to look at leadership promise. 
since we know that everything rises and falls on leadership, since we know that the, the outcome or the effect or the consequences of a majority may be a product of the actions and the inactions of a minority, it's important that we therefore consider what is the manner or how are these minorities, these few people who could carry on their shoulders the responsibilities of determining the destinies of multitudes, how are these people found? How are they chosen? How are they... Uh, how are, they, how are they found? That's the word. How are these few who have influence over the destinies of many, how are they found? From my understanding and from my observation, I've realized that the men, the women, who could be few, who could also have influence over the destinies of multitudes, are usually found by their promises. If we call to remembrance the circumstance that brought uh, the Prime Minister of England into position of authority, we would remember very clearly that she became the Prime Minister simply by her promises. She promised the people of United Kingdom Brexit. And so because she promised, and then the, the former incumbent Prime Minister, the then incumbent, uh, Gordon Brown, he didn't believe in that idea. He didn't promise them that. Since the people bought the idea, they bought the promise, she was made the Prime Minister. Donald Trump is the President of the United States of America today, and it is a product of his own promises. He promised to build a wall along the Mexican border, and he also promised to renegotiate the trade deals America has had over the generations and over the years, especially with China and, Unite and the um, European Union. So if it, America has been uh, cheated, if it, the trade deal, the trade has not been balanced, favor, it has never been favoring the United States. So he promised the United States people that he would renegotiate the trade deals and he would build the Mexican border. And so on his promises, he was elected the president of the United States of America. If you look on and on, you will hardly see anyone who is made a leader, who is chosen as a leader, who has no promise. So it is the promises of certain people that distinguishes them from the rest. We are great people. We are so great a number of people living in different countries, different nations across the world. The question is, how can certain few people be uh, identified in the midst of such multitude? I believe people are identified, people are differentiated in generations by their promises. The question you may actually have to answer at this moment is what is the promise you are providing or you are making you are giving you are delivering or you are you are proclaiming to your generation what is your promise what do you promise to do what do you see what is your plan now if you have no promise if you have no plan you are likely going to be mixed in the crowd because the multitudes don't usually have promises it is the few that have promises that exact influence over the majority and so when a nation is in dear need of change when the uh, when the culture of a people of an organization is in dear need of a reform is in dear need of a re-engineering of some sort when there is need for an organization to eat the bottom line very hard then the first thing that comes to mind isn't usually on oh should we get more staff should we get more people no they think about who can lead the organization who can lead the group who can lead the, the company the team to that new experience because it is somebody who has a promise who has the capacity equally to lead now those who don't have promise must necessarily follow those who have promise I believe very strongly that one thing that can draw you out of the crowd of a promiseless people is your own promise. What do you promise to do? What do you promise to fix? What do you promise to drive? What is your promise? The question again we could ask you is, do you have the capacity to fulfill your promise? 
Can we trust you? Can we believe you? I believe as you meditate over these words, you would become a better person and you will be better placed in leadership responsibility for effectiveness. Don't forget we are treating the leadership trip to Genesis and I'm sure you are wondering, now we have said all that, yet we have not gone into the book of Genesis. Let's quickly go to Genesis chapter 18 and let's look at a few verses there so that we can have a graphical picture or a, 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 a story we can have a better understanding for the concept that we are treating today, the leadership promise. So let's quickly go to the book of Genesis chapter 18, and I will be reading from verse 1. Genesis chapter 18 from verse 1, I will read to verse 5. The Bible says, Then the Lord appeared to him, talking about Abraham, by the terebinth trees of Mamre, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground. And I want us to watch very closely. And said, verse 3, My Lord, if you have now found favor, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servants. If I have not found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Number four, um, verse 4, the Bible says, please, and I want you to note that word, please. I'm sure you understand that please is a word of persuasion. Please, let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your heart. After that, you may pass by in as much as you have come to your servant. They said, in as much as you have come to your servant. They said, do as you have said. And I want you to note that word, that phrase. Do as you have said. What is it that Abraham said that warranted the response as such as that. They said to him, do as you have said. Do as you have said. Do as you have said. What did he say? He said, please, let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. These are the things he said. Verse 5, and I will bring a morsel of bread and you may refresh your heart. After that, you may pass by in as much as you have come to your servant. And they said, do as you have said. Now see verse 6. Let me just show you so that you understand what happened after they said, do as you have said. Verse 6. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. Now, if you read through the entire chapter, you will see that actually Abraham did as he said. And after he had done what he said, there was a response from the guest that he received. The first thing that happened, God said to him, he didn't know he has entertained God. He said, will I keep this thing that I want to do in the generation of Abraham, around Abraham? Will I keep it away from him? Now, then God began to talk to him about what he intended to do. And so Abraham knew God wanted to destroy the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, the very place that his nephew, Lot, had been. And so he said to God, God, if you could find 50 people who are righteous, would you also destroy a, a nation with 50 righteous people? God said, no, if I find 50, I won't destroy. Until he got to 10. If I find 10 people in a nation, I won't destroy. So you would see that there was a large number of people. Uh, the land of Sodom and Gomorrah had a lot of people, perhaps thousands or hundreds of thousands. And yet, one man had the responsibility of negotiating their destiny. He said, God, you wouldn't do that. God, you shouldn't do that. Lord, do this. And God said, okay, I will do this. But only if I find so you would notice that even though it began with, please, if I found favor in your sight, let a little water be brought to you. Let me do this. 
let me do this. It, it started with promise. The ultimate of that promise was that he began to negotiate the destiny of nations. So you could see that even though we believe that the responsibility, I mean, the experience of each person is often the product of their decisions and their indecisions, sometimes what becomes of a people is not often the consequence of their own decisions or lack of decision, but the decision of those who have influence over them. At that time, Abraham was the one that was negotiating the experience of those people. So, towards negotiating their destiny, he needed to make promises to God. He said, God, let me do this, let me do this, let me do this. And I want us to note that if he didn't do what he promised, he wouldn't be able to negotiate destinies. So, men and women that have influence over us, men and women that have become so powerful that they could determine our lives and our deaths. These people often don't just get there. They get there because they've crossed the line. They've crossed the order of promise. As soon as Abraham finished delivering on the promises he made, he got to a point, a position, that he could negotiate the destinies of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. So the people that are negotiating our destinies today too, in the different parts of the world, in the different organizations, in different groups, there are men and women that, has, that have made us, that have made promises to us and perhaps have fulfilled them or have not fulfilled them. But I want you to look very quickly at the situation of your country. Look very quickly at the situation of your organization. Are those promises made, fulfilled? Do these men fulfill each word that comes from their mouth about us? Now, the scripture says, as soon as Abraham said what he said, they answered, do as you have said. A quote, a popular quote says, be careful what you wish for, because you might just have it. Imagine Abraham lacking the capacity to deliver on his promises. The destinies of the, Sod the Sodomites and the people of Gomorrah would have been messed up due to his own incompetence. I don't just want you to become, why we know that your promises can separate you from the rest. You can be translated from the realm of multitudes to the realm of the few by your promises. I don't want you to become a man of promises. I want you to begin to walk on yourself from today towards becoming a man, a woman that can deliver on ease or our promises. When you say you will do, you will do, you will do, the question is, do you always do? Now, why you have not been able to do, has it been because of your own unfaithfulness or because of your lack of capacity? Now, whichever way that could have been, I want you to begin to introspect. I want you to begin to examine yourself. I want you to begin to reveal your choices, your decisions, your statements. What are your plans? The plans you've been planning. <laughs> Do you have the capacity to implement them? How would 2019 be? Would it be a product of your empty promises or a product of your fulfilled promises? Would 2019 by December 31st, it be exactly as we have planned it or be just anyhow. So I want you to think about this. The leadership promise is the word that the Lord has delivered in, uh, in my spirit for us. And I believe is a word that can awaken us to responsibility. The leadership responsibility often comes because of leadership promise. Now, if you promise and you, do, and you lack the capacity to deliver your promise, you will be ineffective in delivering your leadership responsibilities. So I want you, as you desire to become better in delivering, in making promises, in making plans, I want you to become better in implementing your plans. Don't just be a great visionary in 2019. Be a great implementer of your vision. Be a great implementer of your plans. Everything you said you would do, Develop the capacity to do them. Don't finish 2019 with 
loads of promises unfulfilled, finish 2019 with every issue, every promise ticked, haven't been fulfilled by you. And I pray that God will help you. God will give you the grace and God will encourage you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the gift of your time. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching The Leader View. My name is Boe Gadidiji and I hope to connect with you again next week. Stay blessed. Join us online. Come to center for uh, centerndhl.org. Come to leadersword.org. Read more articles on leadership. Read more articles. Listen to other podcasts. Watch more videos. And I see your leadership getting better. I see you becoming more effective. I see you commanding results in your own generation. And I pray that God will continue to trust you and continue to use you to effect change in your own generation. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Stay blessed.